But we still have three more games left to play in this turbulent Miami Hurricane season. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricane. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's promo code LOCKED. So happy on this episode, folks, to be joined by someone who knows what a build and a rebuild should look like. He's a former Miami Hurricanes team captain, used to snap footballs to Jim Kelly. Don Bailey Jr. is with us. And Don, I'm actually wearing a Jim Kelly throwback <laughs> today in honor of your former teammate. How are you? I, pr- I appreciate that. He, 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 des- he deserves that honor. Two very good men, Jim Kelly. And, and Alex Dono, two great guys. But uh, it was a, it was a, a great experience um, being Jim Kelly's center, and it, it's been an even better experience watching him uh, after he left the University of Miami. Yeah, it's been an incredible journey, certainly for him. And listen, it's been a pretty incredible, long and winding journey for the U since those days, Don. And, you know, first of all, you're awesome at what you do. Don is also the Miami Hurricanes color analyst on the radio network. He and Joe Zagaki do a fantastic job covering the games. But I really wanted your sp- your perspective today because, DBJ, when you played at the U, you played for Coach Schnellenberger, late 70s, early 80s. And that was, you know, one of the best – program builds in the history of college football what coach was able to do maybe there is maybe there isn't but do you see maybe any potential parallels to how this thing is starting out now in 2022 to how things were starting out in the late 70s I see a lot of parallels I I, you have to go back really to UM history and understand that, and I'm going to be off a little bit, but I'm going to be close. I think before Howard Schnellenberger took over, Miami only had two winning seasons in 14 years, and I think they'd only been to one bowl game in the last 10 years. And, you know, he followed Lou Saban. Uh, The University of Miami back then, uh, that was Lou Saban came in in 77, and I think 75, 76, they were considering dropping football from the University of Miami. And there was a a small group of of board of trustees members, uh, President Henry King Stanford and a gentleman, I forget his first name, but Green was his last name, was the the uh, CFO of the university. And they sat down and they decided that we're going to we're going to make football work. And they went and hired Lou Saban. Coach Saban came in and uh, gave Miami a winning season in his second year and then left and then. They went on a search, and fortunately, they found they found Howard Schnellenberger. And, you know, Howard Schnellenberger uh, at that time had just come off being the offensive coordinator for the undefeated Miami Dolphins. He'd been a head coach at the Colts. He'd won, uh, had been a coordinator and won two or three national championships with Bear Bryant at Alabama. And really, Alex, to this day, I think he had the best resume in the history of college football and all of football when you when you really break it down. And he came in, and, and, and I see what Coach Nellenberger did is, you know, I don't know if people remember this, but the first press conference he had, you know, the first meeting we had as a team, he stood before us all, and he told us that we're going to win a national championship. And, again, this is a team that hadn't won anything, hadn't been to bowl games and had one winning season in, in 14 years or whatever it was. And he stood before us and said, we're going to win a national championship. The only variable is time. And we're just going to have to outwork every single opponent that we play. And all I want, and he, you know, we wanted the best that you could give. And that's what he wanted. And then he, he marched upstairs and, and he said to the group uh, of media, that time it's all print, and uh, for the most part, and he said, Miami's going to win a national championship. The only variable is time. And with that being said, you know, the next day, <laughs> front page was was pipe dreams and uh, the herald and, and, and the news <laughs> that's a, because that's you know, a great headline pipe, right yeah and <clears throat> but what happened is is that he set the goal he set the goal and he never wavered from that goal 
and he kept his promise. <laughs> we were going to be the hardest working team in America uh, and would have the hardest working staff. And, and he set expectations higher every single day. And you either bought in or you left or got the hell out of the way. It was either get on the bus or get out of the way. And it took him some, a while. And, you know, I'll remind you, you know, that was a team that first year, you know, he lost, we lost to Florida A&M. And, yeah. and, and which would be similar to, to the loss Miami had against Middle Tennessee. And then a month later, you know, we go to Penn State and start a guy named Jim Kelly, at quarterback, and a center named Don Bailey. And we win that football game, uh, you know, on the road at Penn State. And we finish the season with Jim Kelly, at quarterback, two and two. Uh, and, had, and having had played Penn State, Alabama, Notre Dame, and Florida, wow. and and he but he set the course. And I and and you asked me about the parallel. That's what Mario Cristobal is doing right now. He came in in, in here and he has set a course. And he's a highly organized head coach. He's got a ton of experience and an outstanding resume. Uh, how he has prepared himself for this job is is really been uh you know he got his doctorate in, in, in coaching with uh, at Alabama and he was a young head coach at, at FIU in his 30s and and brought that program from no wins to to bowl games but I watch him every day and fortunately I, I get to see him in in all different kinds of environments and I and I and I see a, a passion that's uncomparable for this program a compassion for winning but a care for the student athlete. You know, nowadays it is a lot different than it was before. Before it was, you know, you, you had 110 guys. You, it was hard to transfer. You know, you, you, had, to, you had to tough it out or, or you quit. And now, you, you know, you see Coach Cristobal managing this football team and his staff and the building and everything else that goes with it. And I see a guy that is – this football program and this athletic department is in good hands with him. And you put uh, Dan Radakovich into the equation and and what the commitment has been, again, the recommitment, really, if you, you look at it that way, from the, from the university itself, it's going to happen. And, again, the only variable is going to be time because you can't – but it takes time for people to understand what it takes to win. Howard Schnellenberger had to teach the University of Miami football team how to win football games. And I don't, you know, you probably know the numbers better than me. I mean, we've had one 10 win season since 2003 or 2004. That's correct. So this program is learning how to win. And, and what does that mean? That means that everybody, everybody in the building has got to invest. And every player who thinks they, 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 they played their best game. They haven't. The best game is, is to come, and the best practice is the next practice. And, and it takes time to do that. But, I, I, again, I see the focus of Coach Cristobal. I look at his resume. I see the commitment. And he knew the challenge that this was. And, you know, here's a guy, when you really break it down, if he, you know, you would think that if he was still at Oregon, he'd be sitting in the top 10 right now with one loss. And if he can finish his season, he's going to be in the playoffs. Well, he decided to come back home and take over the family business. And that's a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, it takes a lot of guts, uh, a lot of guts to do that. And he, he and he's put together a staff that we were all drooling over yeah. uh, four months ago and five months ago. And we should still be happy that those guys are here but I, I i'm i'm very optimistic i mean that's me by nature but i've seen things built before and i've seen things and i've been in the process and i've done the process so to me i, I just it's business as usual unfortunately miami you know had a bad loss to florida state they've had you know they've lost to duke and middle tennessee and and, and north carolina and the record's not what everybody hoped but the building of this of this program is starting and there's there's pieces that are being put in place.
And this is exactly the perspective that I, I was seeking here with Don Bailey Jr. Because not only has he seen it, he's been part of it. And, you know, when we come back, I do want to get Don's take on some of the ups and downs from this season. Certainly want to get his take on offensive line and how the depth is being tested since DBJ is a former offensive lineman. And I, I want to get his take on the quarterbacks as well. So, guys, you need to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Folks, inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less. I know I've been doing that. Uh, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store, we can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on every purchase. And guys, so people ask me, is this too good to be true? It's not too good to be true. It's so easy. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use my promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. I've been using Upside since 2020, and I've made, uh, I think, a few hundred dollars off of it. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business. Pay as usual with a credit card or debit card, and then you get paid. The cash back comes right into your account. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's five or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. Thank you for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. And we're so pleased to be joined by former Miami Hurricanes team captain Don Bailey Jr. Now, Don, you are, of course, a former offensive lineman. Uh, Miami's offensive line, uh, you know, they've obviously had trouble protecting their quarterbacks in recent weeks, but it's they've been ravaged by injury DBJ. I mean, you know, with what, what's been going on throughout the year, Jalen Rivers, the most recent one, Zion Nelson, likely not going to suit up and play again this year. He's missed most of the games this season. Ja'Kai Clark has been in, in and out. Justice Olawashan is injured now. Uh, you know, John Campbell did play last week, but I saw him come up uh, looking hurt in the warmups, and he came back out and played anyway. So I know even the guys who are on the field are playing through some things. How difficult is it to find like any sort of continuity on an O-line with the situation they've had this year? Well, you know, Alex, you, you talk about all those injuries and then you, you throw in, you know, Jalen Knighton and Henry Parrish. Both of those guys have got been dinged up uh, this yeah. year. You know, the f thought that we lost uh, Citizen, the, the incoming freshman who is really, if, you, if you're doing the eyeball test, he's the most impressive back out of everybody. We haven't had him. And, you know, it, it's it's crushed. Uh, any continuity that you built in the spring. And I look at uh, Jalen Rivers without question. If you, you can either leave in the quarterback or take him out. He's either your first or second best player on the entire offense. And this is a guy that, uh, that I believe if, if Miami, you know, when he comes back next year, he should be a preseason all American and might be the, the best offense alignment in the conference. And, Unfortunately, you know, he went out last week against Florida State. We don't know what the situation is going to be for him, but it, he's he is a huge loss. And, you know, you bring up Zion Nelson. He was the only guy. Um, it was Zion Nelson and then Will Mallory were preseason uh, all ACC. And you throw in the kicker. I mean, the punter. And that, that was who represented Miami as marquee players. And Zion has played a few snaps and, and, and is gone for the year. And the thing that gets lost in this, again, is um, on the offensive line, communication is so important. And when Ja'Kai Clark was out, Miami had a bunch of penalties that day. I think it was at Virginia Tech. That's right. And, uh, and John Dennis was, was in there. And, look, he, he, he hadn't – first of all, he'd never started at center before in a game. He was recruited as a guard. And he had to make those calls, and everybody thought it was DJ Scape jumping off sides four or five times. A lot of it had to do with the communication issues. And now we're starting, and as Cooper, who had a very good game against uh, Virginia and against Florida State, he looked he, he looked like a freshman at times, but he, he really wasn't overwhelmed, which which is important. So the offensive line has not been stable really all year. Uh, I think maybe uh, the last, you know, the first three games, it, there was some stability there, even though Zion wasn't there. But after Texas A&M, the injuries 
have caught up with Miami. You know, Sagapolo had to start a game. Lawrence Seymour, Seymour is getting ready to start his second game. You've had Usman Traor, who's had to come in and take snaps. So it's uh, it's been musical chairs. And, you know, in, in football 101, they tell you, you want you want your offensive line solidified. And you, you got to really look at, uh, again, Coach Cristobal and Coach Mirabal. Their philosophy has made this even less painful than it is because yeah. – they cross train everybody. And what I mean by that is, you know, Jalen Rivers is taking sna- uh, snaps at center and tackle and guard and Clark's taking uh, snaps at guard and, and center. And, and Cooper spent almost the beginning of his uh, career up until about a month ago uh, and also spring at, out at right tackle. So that's all paid off. Sagapolo snaps at guard and center. So the coaching there and the philosophy of, of those guys cross training has, has pretty much made it, made it, uh, almost saved the day. I mean, it's been hard, but they, they're they're coming through. You know, quarterback. Obviously, there there's been turbulence there throughout the year. Um, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see with Tyler Van Dyke. He suffered a setback against Florida State. You know, Cristobal this week talked about preparing three quarterbacks to potentially start. Um, I, I'm I'm not feeling too optimistic about Van Dyke. That's just my opinion based on him being injured and re-injuring it. Um, so, you know, we saw two quarterbacks come in for Van Dyke last week, Jakari Brown, who'd been used situationally, but he ended up getting a lot of snaps on because Garcia has been really out of rhythm. Uh, tell me what you've seen from Jakari Brown, because obviously the arm strength is there. Uh, maybe the timing is not from his throws, but an incredibly talented runner. Do you see in Jakari Brown, what do you see? And do you see the makings of someone who could be a future starter at the U? Yeah, I really do. I see an elite athlete, um, and I think that's second. I think the thing that I see first is that he is a, an excellent football player. Now, does that translate that he's going to be an excellent quarterback? I'm not sure, but he it's too early to tell. But he loves the game. He understands the game. He's highly competitive. He In the building, um, you know, he's – He's a guy that looks like he's in charge without being in charge. Mm. And, 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 I, and you need that out of your quarterback. And I'm very, very impressed with him. I think that, you know, to describe him, I think he's, he's raw and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a stallion. You know, he's, he's a guy that it's got to be, it's got to be uh, to understand his role, understand his game. Because when you're, when you're that type of an athlete and you have that type of skill level and size in high school, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you, you single-handedly can take over a game. You single-handedly can take over a play all the time. You're, you're rarely going to find competition that affects you. And now, you know, he's, he's being faced with competition like he saw against Florida State. And I think it was great that they, they got him in as many reps as they can against Florida State because that's, that's a level that, uh, you know, you only see once or twice a year, and it's good that he gets a taste of it. But I think the future is bright, and it just depends. And, and he's getting – he was getting tutored by Frank Ponce, who's the the offensive, I mean the quarterback coach, and and I I've watched those guys at practice quite a bit, and Coach Ponce is, is does an excellent job tutoring the quarterbacks. He's he's very cerebral with them. He's uh, he's fundamental. He makes sure he does everything that you're supposed to do to help the quarterback. So I think uh, Brown. That's why we've seen so much progress from Brown from the preseason to now is I think that Coach Ponce's influence is being felt. You know, something, you know, when we talk about what it's going to take to get Miami on the right track, um, you know, it's it's not just coaching. It's also the attitude of your players and, and the type of recruits you bring in, Don. And that's, you know, one of the things that I like about Brown is, like, he, he looks like he's competing on every <laughs> single snap. And I want to find more players like this. I wanted to share with you a quote from a, a Miami verbal commit uh, Popo Aguirre, the linebacker out of Georgia, Raul Aguirre, uh, you know, he he said this about the Hurricanes recruiting class. This is a great player, four star linebacker. Hopefully, you know, he follows through with his, with his commitment and all that. He said on uh, he said recently, I think it was to on three sports. I'm going to be honest. We are coming to take people's spots. That's what he said on behalf of the class of 2023. And, Don, I, I'm expecting that sort of competition, right? Because they've already got 20 guys verbally locked in for 2023. These are all fantastic players. Hopefully they can get more to join this class. I, I want to see open competitions at a lot of spots. I think we could see a lot of young guys competing next year. The only way that this program 
the only way that this program is going to continue to to improve and get better is is that everybody understands what Coach Cristobal's philosophy is. That is to have physician competition everywhere. It helps everyone. It helps the players that are established. It helps the players that are coming in. And his focus when he talks to recruits a lot of the time is you are going to get an opportunity. And that, that's the most honest answer you can give. I don't believe that you could ever promise somebody that they're going to start. You can, I don't know how you can do that. And, but you can promise them that if you, I'm going to put you in a position to compete. I'm going to put you in a position to get better every single practice. I'm going to get, put you in a position to get better and str- bigger and stronger in the weight room. I'm going to provide everything you need to maximize your ability. And when doing so, you improve the entire team. So I'm, I, that's the kind of young men that need to be at the University of Miami are the guys that think that they're going to come in and take people's jobs because that's what you want. And if you're not coming – if you're not a freshman coming in here with the mindset that you're going to start and you are going to take someone's job, then I don't even I don't even know why you would want to go play college football. And, you know, I'm going to give you an example of something. And I haven't shared this, I don't think, ever um, publicly. But uh, 20 years ago, when I, or whatever Kenny Dorsey came in, I guess it would have been about 1999 or 98, whatever that was. 99. Yeah. 99 when he came in back then um, I would go, I was, I would always talk to the freshman class and I would talk to them about you university of Miami history and having to start as a freshman and preparation. And they would have former players come in. It was one of the favorite, one of my most, the things that I enjoyed to do the most. So I was talking in front of that entire freshman class and you can, you probably know all the names that are in it. And there was some, there's some marquee names in that freshman class. And I think I think that year we play we were going to open up with Florida State or we we're going to play them early or whatever. And and I went through my deal and I wanted to get a pulse of what this class was. And I and I asked the class and I'm was a little more direct and animated than I am now. Um, who who right now is ready to start against Florida State? Because that's the bar. And, and, and it took all of about, and I asked a question three times. I said, who in this room is ready to start? It took all of three seconds when I finished ask, asking the question for the second or third time. The only person, the only person that stood up was Kenny Dorsey. Wow. He didn't raise his hand. He stood up. So right then and there, and first of all, you got to remember now, he looked like he was uh, the librarian. He didn't look like he was. <laughs> yeah, you're probably player, like, right? what is this, the equipment manager? Who is this yeah, guy? It, it, exactly. But he's the only one that stood up and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he wasn't wobbling when he stood up. He stood up and right then and there, I mean, listen, that's 20 some odd years ago. And I remember it like it's yesterday. And, and, that, and that's the same Kenny Dorsey that that you saw frustrated and angry and, and upset when when the doll, when the Buffalo Bills, uh, you know, lost a football game, those are the guys that win championships. That's the me- the mentality that that overcomes the loss that you just had against Florida State. And you you look at what what happens when these guys come in, and you they take over a football team, they take it over in the classroom, they take it over in the film room, they take it over in the weight room. Because make fun of Kenny all you want, he was the first guy in that building from day one and the, and the last guy out and he was in the weight room and you ne- he was never on any list, never a problem. And he, that's why he was the leader and people counted on him. So, you know, when I start seeing guys come in and, and taking over rooms and taking over positions, then those are the leaders that are going to lead you to where Miami needs to go. That is unbelievable. Uh, Don Bailey Jr. He's going to be on the call this Saturday from Atlanta Miami taking on Georgia Tech, so I, I want to pick DBJ's brain on what stands out most from the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Their, their ability to take the football away, Alex. It's Ooh. it's insane the numbers that they're that they're putting out there. I think there are two or three in the country as far as takeaways, and they just keep 
they just keep doing it. I mean, they had four takeaways last week against uh, Virginia Tech. They're they're twenty. I think they're twenty one takeaways or twenty two takeaways on the season. Uh, they're they they do it in such a fashion where uh, you know their defense creates a lot of havoc. They're 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 trying to cover some things up, and in doing so, they're creating problems for an offense. So I think Miami's going to have to protect the football, and that's something that you know if I if you ask me one statistic that has hurt Miami the whole year. It's been the giveaway takeaway category. Miami's given the football away too many darn times. Yeah. So I'm going to get Don's keys right after this here on Locked on Canes. Let's talk about the great folks at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and even esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. I'm on there every day, guys. Bet Online. Where the game starts. Joined by Don Bailey Jr. here on Locked On Canes. You know, Don. Uh, you know, we we've said this over the years. You know, don't don't let Florida State beat you twice. Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of Miami's issues are internal, and it can't be easy. You know, to bounce back mentally from forty-five to three. So, you know, what would you like to see against Georgia Tech this Saturday in terms of just what Miami can offer between the ears after that tough loss? Yeah, you know, I really got a problem when people people talk about a, a team that that uh, last week beat you. You know what I mean? And and I, I you know, Miami's got to be Miami's got to get to the point where they're tough enough to realize that you know there is a 24 hour rule because there needs to be. And you you've got an opportunity. Fortunately for Miami, they've got an opportunity this Saturday, next Saturday, the following Saturday. And if they take care of business, they might get to a bowl game. But you know, I want to see them come out and be mature, a, a mature football team as best they can. And really, I don't I don't it's that's going to be hard to do with starting the freshman that you are and, 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 and the youth that's in the game. But more importantly, just go do your job. I really that's all they're taught. Just go do your job. And if they get down, keep fighting. I, I, that's what I look for in situations like this. I looked at I looked at it. Uh, in the second half of the Florida State game, I'm going to look forward for for all 60 minutes from here on out. I want to see the guys that are competing as if the, if they're they're undefeated and, and going to play for a national championship. Those are the guys that that you need to have as your leaders from here on out. So you know, I expect Miami to come out and, and win this football game. I mean, that's what the, that's what they're here for. They are here to win the football game. And and these seniors, you know, there's only a few of them. But you got to understand, you've got less than a month left so you know if you're dj scape you got these next three games they may be the only three or games you have left the rest of your life i think you need to to have the most fun you can and play the hardest you can uh to to, to make it happen for your football team any prediction on who the starting quarterback's going to be in a couple days you know what i don't have one and i you know they <laughs> I'm trying to to understand what happened last week. I mean, they yeah. the coach was honest. He said we're we're preparing three quarterbacks and three quarterbacks played. And I don't know, you know, the situation of Van Dyke. I wouldn't put anything against him. You know that he is such a competitor. And I think what gets lost in this last week is how hard he he prepared for that game and how hard he worked to get in the football game. But I really I really don't have a prediction. I I would imagine that if there's three guys on the plane and three guys dressed, then probably three guys are going to play. If there's one guy, then there's probably going to be one guy. I mean, I, that's really how I see it. I've got, I've got all three of them on my chart. So I, that's how I'm going about it. He, he's prepared. Just like Mario, uh, we got Don Bailey prepared for all three quarterbacks this week. I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Everyone, make sure you listen to Don and Joe Zagacki calling the game this Saturday. They're going to be in Atlanta. You can hear it on the Odyssey app or on WQAM if you're in South Florida. That's 560 on the radio dial. Don Bailey Jr., I can't thank you enough for the knowledge and the perspective because we all need it during these tough times. Well, Alex, I appreciate you, and I, you're, you're one of the best in the business. And I, I, anytime I can help you, I'm here for you. And I, I truly appreciate your professionalism, and you'd be one of those guys that would stand up in the room.
That's that I know. <laughs> I would. I'm ready to beat Florida State every right. every year, guys. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We will talk to you guys again tomorrow on another episode of Locked On Canes, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.